All right, I would say, ladies and gentlemen, we're about to introduce the most important derivatives rule that we're going to cover in this entire course and the most commonly missed derivatives rule. Um, that rule is chain rule. And we could use chain rule to solve any of these functions or get their derivatives rather. Notice these are functions that we theoretically could do by hand with what we know already. For example, a, we would be like, okay, that's the same as this. I would multiply it out, right? And then I could take my derivative, right? I could be like f prime is. And notice I could also do the same for b and c, although c would suck, right? Like I wouldn't want to multiply it by itself six times. I guess I could, but it would take me all afternoon. And then d, we don't know how to multiply this out. So notice the pattern here is that it, they're all versions of this function 2x plus 5 stuck inside of another function. So let's investigate that a little bit so we're clear on what we're talking about, and then we will introduce the rule. Um, so notice if we're starting from the inside, the first thing we do if we're PEMDASing, for example, c, is we're multiplying by 2 and adding 5. And then whatever we get, well, that kind of feeds in to step two, which is raise the result to the sixth power, right? So for example, if I'm doing f of one, again, for the function c, f of one would be this, right? Two times one plus five to the sixth. And what I would do is I would do the inside first and that ends up being 7 to the 6th power, um, which is some big number that, that I could get from my calculator. I'm not that worried about, right? But what I am worried about is this question here. It's like, how do we find the rate of change of the total? Right? Now let's call, let's make two other functions. Let's make function A be 2x plus 5. And let's make function B be a to the sixth, right? So if I did the derivative of a, a prime would be two. And if I did the derivative of b, b prime, it would be six a to the fifth. Okay? And then what this actually is equal to, of course, is six times two x plus five to the fifth because that was my a, right? So here's my a, here's my a, here's my a. Now, this expression here that we just got is the most common wrong answer to the, to the question that we're asking here. So if I want to find f prime of x, well, it would be that 6 times 2x plus 5 to the fifth. But we also have to include this a prime. And the way we include it, we just do times 2 on the outside. Right? So I would get 12 times 2x plus 5 to the fifth. So the answer to this question of how do, they, how do we use these two derivatives to find the end result is we multiply them together. So it's the derivative of the outside times the derivative of the inside. And to write this down in more mathematical notation, I would say, let's say I have h of x, this is called the chain rule, is equal to f of g of x. So this is a composition of two functions. So I have a function within a function. h prime of x is equal to f prime. Inside stays the same times the derivative of the inside. And again, this is called the chain rule. And we're going to use it whenever we have a function within a function. Okay, so all th four of these up here, we could have solved using chain rule. And notice if you did chain rule here, for my first one, I would actually get 8x plus 20. You can pause and check that if you'd like. All right, let's move on to some examples here. So we can use this, a, b, and c, Notice we have a table, 
we have kind of this mix of tables and functions, and then we have graphs. We can use chain rule anytime. And the key here, right, is that I have a function within a function, right? So h prime of 4, well, h prime of x would be, this is exactly like the notation we used in the previous page, f prime of g of x times g prime of x. Okay, so that means that h prime of 4 is going to be f prime of g of 4 times g prime of 4. And just like we've done in the past, I like to make myself a little list here of all my key values. So for this case, g of 4 is 2, and g prime of 4 is 1 half. And notice I don't know what's going to go inside of f prime yet, right? So I'm going to simplify this now by substitution f prime of g of 4 is 2 times 1 half is g prime of 4. Now I need f prime of 2, which is 8. So then I can plug that in, and I get 4 is my final answer. Okay, so notice what I did not use is f prime of 4, right? I never use that 0 because I don't need f prime of 4. I need f prime of g of 4. Example B is similar, although I have the square root in here, just like we've done before. I'm going to rewrite that as f of x to the one-half power, right? And then my r prime of x, well, then I can do power rule, right? So it would be one-half f of x to the negative one-half times f prime of x. Okay, so that's going to be, if I'm using r prime of 2, it's going to be one-half times f of 2, so 1 half times 1 half to the negative 1 half times f prime of 2, which is 8. Okay, and then you could simplify that. I think my example, my answer here would be a decimal. The key here is like I multiply by that inside derivative again, right? Now, my last my last example here is graphical. These, for most people, are the trickiest ones, I think. So I'm going to write out my derivative right away. So notice I have graphs of f and g. h is their composition. So h prime is going to be f prime of g times g prime of x. So then h prime of 0 is going to be f prime of g of 0 times g prime of 0. And then here again, I like to write out the values that I need. So g of 0 is the y value at 0, which is negative 2. g prime of 0 is the slope there, which is hard to see, but it is negative 2 over 3. And if you need to, make yourself a note that this is the slope at x equals 0. And I'm going to start to plug things in, right? So I'm going to be like h prime of 0 now equals f prime of negative 2 times negative 2 thirds. And then I need f prime of negative 2. And that slope is pretty clearly along this whole piece is 1, negative 1 rather, so negative 1 times negative thirds is going to be 2 thirds, it's going to be my final answer here. Okay, so notice the rule is the same regardless of how I present the problems to you. Um, do not forget to multiply by the derivative of the inside.